Hi guys, it is an unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in the former paradise of South Austin, Texas here on this gorgeous Thursday morning April 27, 2017 so I've got to wade into my which used to be weekly dump the Trump the Dump the Trump de Hive Roundup rant. Uh, looking at Donald Trump's first 100 days in office, and uh, good lord. But before I get into that, I was going to make this uh, part of that rant, but rereading it, I see it stands on its own as my quote of the day, which I found on alternate.org. Um, which was reviewing and excerpting Noam Chomsky's new book about the uh, collapse of this planet. And I thought I would share some of these quotes with you. This little dog, I guess you can sit here. So take it away, Noam Chomsky, and ex tell us why the Republican Party is the most dangerous organization in world history. Uh, so this is Noam's new book, Requiem for the American Dream, The Ten Principles of Concentration of Wealth and Power. And uh, of course, you cannot write a book with that title without looking at, um, at Donald Trump in particular and the Republican Party more generally, talking about this concentration of wealth and power that we see embodied in Donald Trump. And uh, he starts out, at least this excerpt, shared in alternate starts out looking at what it means for the country of the United States, what Donald Trump and his band of uh, horsemen of the apocalypse are doing to shred the U.S. Constitution and all that. But then he gets to the larger picture. He swims over from the shallow end of the doomsday prophecy pool about the death of America to the death of the human race and every other species we share this planet with. Under this section, the survival of the species. So I'm gonna do an extended quote from Noam from his new book. Take it away, Noam. I think the future looks pretty grim. I mean, we are facing really serious problems. There is one thing that should not be ignored. We are in a stage of history for the first time ever where we are facing literal questions of species survival. Can the species, meaning particularly the human species, but I think just by being so general, you can uh, extrapolate to the rest of the species. Can the species survive, at least in any decent form? That's a real problem. And so then he says that that problem really exploded on November 8th, 20. 16. There you go. Uh, the date where which placed total control of the U.S. government, executive Congress, and the Supreme Court in the hands of the Republican Party, which has become the most dangerous organization in world history. The Republican Party, now under Donald Trump, is dedicated 
to racing as rapidly as possible to destruction of organized human life. There is no historical precedent for such a stand. Is this an exaggeration? Consider what we have just been witnessing. The winning candidate calls for rapid increase in use of fossil fuels, including coal. The dismantling of regulations, rejection of help to developing countries that are seeking to move to sustainable energy, <clears throat> and in general, racing to the cliff as fast as possible. Um, blah, 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 moving ahead. It is no less difficult to find words to capture the utterly astonishing fact that in all the massive coverage of the electoral extravaganza, none of this, talking about the impending death of the human race and the planet, none of this receives more than passing mention. We are heading eyes open toward a world in which our grandchildren may not be able to survive. We are heading toward environmental disaster, and not just heading toward it, but rushing toward it. This is, you know, in my ecological meltdown roundup rants, I'm saying, you know, Donald Trump has just taken this planet from heading into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour to 77,000 miles an hour, kind of what Noam is saying here. The U.S. is in the lead of accelerating these dangers under the pressure of business for, in large part, institutional reasons. Just take a look at the headlines. And then uh, he goes through some of that, uh, talking mainly about the climate change headlines and what's going on uh, with the uh, climate um, and what is the reaction of Donald Trump and the Republican Party. Quote, their reaction is enthusiasm. We can now accelerate the process because new areas of the Arctic are open for digging and extraction of fossil fuels so we can make it worse. That's great. This is a death sentence for our descendants. Yes. Uh... Blah, blah, blah. This demonstrates either a remarkable lack of concern for our own grandchildren and others like them, or else an equally remarkable inability to see what is before our own eyes. Close quote, and uh, I guess Gnome goes on in this vein for about 300 pages, and then, uh, and then from there it goes into the uh, how nuclear war uh, is is suddenly back on the front burner with Donald Trump uh, at the controls. If uh, if nuclear war don't get you, climate change will. And uh, Donald Trump and, and the entire Republican Party are just, uh, you know, taking us into a brick wall uh, at 77,000 miles an hour, which gets me to my bottom line is that Donald Trump, obviously, the first 100 days of his presidency uh, has proven beyond any shadow of a doubt what I was saying back on November 8th, that Donald Trump is the man for the job to 
to crash and burn global industrial civilization. So on that level, your old eco-Nazi is cheering him on. Of course, the question is, which is he going to collapse first? Global industrial civilization or the planet? And uh, it, it looks to me like uh, he, he's going to do both, but probably about the same time. Uh, anyway, with that, that will be my segue into this week's Dump the Trump de Hive Roundup rant where I look at uh, the hundred million stories about Donald Trump's first 100 days in office. A look back. Somehow. I will, I will get through this without hurling projectile vomit all over my little dog and this camera coming up in one minute. Bye, guys.